Mega Mechatronics. Welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. We're going to tear down this value LED light bar rated at 70 watts. I paid around $30 for it. So we're going to hook it up to our adjustable DC power supply and see what this thing is actually pulling. So let's hook up a meter and double check our readings. So we're going to put the meter in series and turn it on amps. Just kind of verify. So not sure if the meter's dropping some power or I don't know. So because the supply is saying 3.85, but the meter says 3.55, I'm going to go for what the meter says. But when you see when we switch the probes around to measure the voltage drop across the LED bar, we'll see that 3.55 coming out of the adjustable power supply. So we'll go with 3.55 amps times 14.4 volts and that gives us 51 watts and then with some losses the LEDs are probably getting about 46 of watts of power. So they're quite a bit underdriven which could be a good thing for longevity bad thing for brightness or lumens. So pull those little adjustable mounts off those two little blocks and then we'll pull this end cap off. And I don't think there's any uh, input protection, transient voltage uh, spike protection or anything like that. So this we've got straight input power wires. And those are just soldered right to that board. So we'll go ahead and take off the other end cap. And there we can find the same type of gasket system. Just that one. It's actually a pretty intricate gasket. It's not just a piece of rubber. It's like three-dimensional. Okay, so there's a slot for where the mount goes. And then you can see this gap in the reflector. So between the reflector and the board... Huge gap. That's probably not what the design engineers intended, um, or the uh, I, I'm not sure what those engineers who work with uh, reflectors are called, but they would probably be smacking their palm against their head right now. Okay, so let's pull this the plastic clear lens off the protective lens. I'm assuming that's polycarbonate because it didn't crack under the pressure of these bolts screwing down straight on top of it. So you see when I pull this out the uh, bolt end of the bolt interfaces and touches that plastic and pushes it down. Um, not too excited about that design. So I'm just being extra careful, careful here. You can see I figured out you can just slide it out. And you can see the little marks from the bolt heads on that lens. But if it's actually polycarbonate, lexan type stuff, it's not going to fracture. It'll take a quite a bit. It's very high impact, but prone to scratches. So I'm careful again, pulling out the reflector, just a piece of plastic with uh, that surface uh, coating, um, that highly reflective coating on there. And you can see that board underneath there. And it looks like there's only like one buck converter. So I'm assuming there are two LEDs in series and then they're all paralleled. So I'm cleaning up all uh, the LEDs with some alcohol just in case it was contaminated from the factory or contaminated from me opening it up. And I'm just realizing these gaskets are kind of messed up. They shrunk. So one side's kind of just attached on there, probably from being smashed there for a while. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the get this so into a usable state. So I'm trying to figure out will this stay? I'm trying the other side completely came off. Stretching it. It's really stretchy gooey stuff. So I actually had some other stuff in stock, eighth inch diameter, uh, Santaprene rubber from a different project a couple years ago. It was actually another LED light bar that I designed, and I will make a video on how I designed that. 
So I'm doing a little test fit here with this new gasket material. See if it actually will work. So I have no idea how to seal with that other stuff that shrunk. Maybe you can use a uh, silicone uh, gasket maker. These, um, but I'm not sure the compatibility with the Lexan if it would uh, affect that negatively. So luckily I had the stuff in stock, so we'll go with that. And we'll just cut to length. I cut it slightly longer, maybe three sixteenths, what hundred and eighty seven thousandths longer, or you know maybe four millimeters, four or five millimeters, extra. And then we'll just trim off the excess. Do a little double check on length right there. So, I mean, the LED, it's pretty straightforward. It, that the heat sink housing. I didn't mention earlier is actually just an extrusion. So when they designed it, it was a two dimensional design and then they extrude it like Play-Doh into a three di dimensional shape. Here's some dielectric tune up grease. This is high silicone content grease, very compatible, compatible with a lot of gasketing materials. Most, most gasketing materials won't be negatively affected by this type of grease. So you don't want to use petroleum grease, um, Unless, like, this could probably handle the petroleum grease just fine because it's so resistant. But we don't have to do that because i got a huge tube of this grease. So we'll get the reflectors back in. And again with the extrusion, very, very um, inexpensive. Oh, here we go, some Pro Honda Lock. Honda Lock. So this is about one-third, one-quarter of the price of Loctite Blue. So... I picked this up at Rocky Mountain uh, ATV MC. Uh, it's an online distributor in the States. Uh, I'm sure you can find it overseas if you search for it. comes in a bunch of different flavors. I like the stuff because it's so affordable. And you can use it more often, I would say, if you don't get a bunch of money. Okay. And so the wrestling match begins getting these new sal gaskets because... They have this permanent uh, deformity. So if you twist the gasket in the correct clock position, it'll hold itself in there. So with this design, I'm glad to see. I've seen some other light bars using extruded designs, and they're like $1,000. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Um, so maybe, I mean, the price is in the engineering, extrusion die, um, you know, the extrusion dies under ten grand. Um, if you know the right people, I guess. Um, but that die should allow you to push a bunch of product out before it wears out. So the, the tolerances with this design are pretty open. Just being a raw extrusion, it looks like you can take an extrusion, extruded product, and machine it very accurately. But with this design. Not so much, so there's lots of clearance in some areas like those that reflector that wasn't sitting in there very well. So low tolerance design. So once I got it started, I, I was able to push this in. The Santaprene was not shifting um, and sliding with this, so actually worked out really well. So I uh, squared off the lens, and then um, we're going to start tightening these down. We're going to add that locking compound, that Loctite stuff. To each of these because I was afraid of over torquing and uh, damaging that lens. So I'm going to give it a decent amount of torque by hand um, and then with the Loctite it'll keep that held down. And that new gasket material is a little bit higher, uh, harder, the durometer a little bit higher than that gooey stuff that came from the factory. So we're doing a cross bolt pattern. I started from the middle and then worked my way out. So when in doubt, just do the cross bolt pattern. And this will keep stuff from walking out of position. Okay, and we got our flush cutters. Flush cutters cut. Uh, so you can cut off something flush to the surface, but we're going to leave about a millimeter, about 40 thousandths of an inch. Cut those off, and then just being rubber, it'll, the gasket will make up for it, and the grease. 
So we're going to slather this silicone grease all over the end, the ceiling surface, and we'll get a closer look uh, later in the video of that surface. I didn't get a good shot. I apologize here. So I'm going to slather this all around. It's going to be following that extruded aluminum, and then we're going to come through those gaskets, that those round rod gaskets. And then we add some to the actually the, the lens itself. So we're adding some locking compound to the end cap screws. And that's, uh, there'll be a better view later in the video. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, we'll get the other side done. Kind of cut through this. So I, again, I slather a bunch of grease on that end. And again, we're just trying to close up the small gaps. So it was somewhat water resistant, waterproof from the factory. So they got it pretty close. We'll take it. They got about 90% there. We'll take it to 100 with this this grease. So we'll do a quick test. I already tested it earlier. I didn't show it. We'll test it again. And oops, I forgot to install those hex nuts that we pull out of that slot for the mounts. But here you can see that shape. It's like an L shape, that shiny goo stuff. So it's not really the whole rubber part is sealing. It's just that area. So we'll kick these nuts in and we're pretty much done. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this and other fun mechatronics projects, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Mega Man. Thank you for watching.